Black Americans are one of the most privileged people in the world, and we have to talk about it more. Bet, please do tell me how privileged black Americans are. Here's the average salary in Mexico, in Ukraine, in Egypt, in Vietnam, all big countries with huge economies from different continents. And here is average welfare check in USA. You see the difference? You missed already. I guess cost of living just doesn't exist. Cost of living in Mexico compared to the United States, Ukraine compared to the United States, Egypt compared to the United States, and Vietnam compared to the United States. So while we can just say, oh, these are very big economies and look at the difference in wage compared to the welfare checks, we must take into account how much money it actually costs to live in a given society in order to determine whether or not these things are disproportionate. And given that in every fucking country you just mentioned, the cost of living is so much lower than the United States, you can understand why the difference is there. Also, this video is supposed to be about how privileged black people are but the first thing he talks about is welfare checks also also claiming that a group of people are privileged because a welfare check was set at an amount that's higher than another country's wage is fucking dumb considering the people that live in the country with the welfare checks are considered poor for that country in that economy that they need to live in. So saying, oh my God, you're considered poor here, but you wouldn't be in a different country is as dumb as saying, oh, you were just raped. Well, guess what? People have died, so you must be privileged. People all over the world have to work hard for this money, while people in America are getting more for doing absolutely nothing, just because they are born in the United States. Miss number two, it'd be a damn shame if the majority of people on welfare are actually working. Because, oh yeah, while well, we can complain about how high the welfare checks are compared to other countries, it isn't even enough to live in America off of, which forces people who are even working full time to still work a job while being on government assistance. Again, because while we can play oppression Olympics, context matters. Now just imagine being born in Harlem, New York, one of the richest cities in the world, in one of the richest countries in the world, and complaining about not being able to get out of the ghetto. While some Middle Eastern refugee has to smuggle himself to America illegally in a cargo bay of the ship, not having home, not having money, not having citizenship, just to get the slightest chance at life that you had since birth. <laughs> it's a damn shame you don't even realize how stupid this just was. Level one, let's talk about your logic. This essentially boils down to don't ask for anything more if you're already receiving more than somebody else. Which, for obvious reasons, I would hope, makes zero fucking sense. That Middle Eastern refugee who had to smuggle himself on a ship in order to make it to America has it measurably better than a Southeast Asian kid who will live and die in the same village buried under plastic and trash from our pollution. Does that mean we should make no effort to make it so that Middle Eastern refugees shouldn't have to smuggle themselves into the country to have a good life? Does that mean that those Middle Eastern refugees should just shut up and acknowledge the fact that they're more privileged than somebody else? Fucking no! And if you say yes, then you're counteracting everything your entire video is about. Hence why Oppression Olympics is a dumb game to play. Level 2 of why this stupid. Let's run the actual numbers. Seeing as you mentioned refugees coming to America, let's compare them to black people in America. Again, context matters. After 5 years in the United States, refugees have a median household income of 22,000. After 15 years, that grows to 37,000. And after 50 years, it grows to 67,000. Black people in the United States had a median household income of 30,419.70. 51 years later, that number is 48,297. Which means if we run the numbers on that, in the same amount of time it has taken refugee household income to grow by $45,000, black household income has grown by $17,897. So if I wanted to stoop down to your level and assume that money, devoid of all context, immediately denotes privilege, who is more privileged in the United States? This very point is something that you go on to contradict yourself on two seconds later when you go on to say. And please, don't give me that excuse about America being racist. Here's the list of richest households in the United States by ethnicity. White people are not even in top five. How could they all be so prosperous if the country is so racist? Bucko, I don't even think you realize what you're saying here. This is exactly why context matters, because I'm not sure what privilege you're trying to preach to black people about when not only do all the other Americans make more money than black Americans, Average Americans make more money than black Americans. Would you really make the argument that for any other demographic in any other country, them making less than what the average person in their country makes is them having privilege? No, the hell you wouldn't, which is why you try to bring it to a worldwide context, because as soon as you start talking about American context, you get blown the fuck out of the water and start trying to disprove racism by Obama. Can you name any other dominantly white country that had black president for two terms in a row? Who's gonna tell him that the next president started a rumor that he wasn't even born here simply because he was black? Now we can talk about how a lot of these immigrant groups you mentioned have higher rates of college degrees, which is something that is quite literally selected for prior to immigration into this country, meaning a disproportionate amount of them coming over with education already, which is why they make so much more than the native born population. We can talk about how Asian Americans have not faced the same institutional barriers as black people. We can talk about Harlem and how you're apparently confused that many black people can't make it out the ghetto. And you can't get out of the ghetto, really? Man, maybe take a subway. When the city was redlined to high hell, East Harlem had the seventh lowest household income among 55 other 
New York neighborhoods and almost one third of households live below the federal poverty line and how it was literally the birthplace of the very renaissance that was an artistic backlash to intense anti-black racism in the country. We can talk about the fact that while yes, slavery and racism exist in countries all over the world, the slavery that built the new world was chattel and racialized, which is something that was unique that was not found in the Middle East, in Africa, or in Europe prior. But something tells me that if you don't even have the brain cell count to realize that you just made an entire video about why black people are privileged while using the same racist, factually incorrect statements that have been used since 20 years after slavery to justify why black people are in such shit positions, then something tells me you're not ready for that conversation. I award you no points. May God have mercy on your soul. Your soul.